a Stuart 10H steam engine build part 6 drilling two holes in the top of the piston to allow the use of a tool to fit and unscrew the piston from the crosshead. More casting cleaning and drilling the mounting holes in the box bed base. An unorthodox way of making the crank pin the right size without machining it, then fitting the parts together followed by attachment to the crankshaft. I need to mark out the piston to drill two holes in it. And the easiest way to do this is to use a lathe tool but not one like this, which is actually very blunt. I didn't realise how blunt it was until I saw it do this. But anyway, the point is I'm making a scratch mark all the way along the piston, so I need to drill two holes on this line. But whereabouts on the line? The easiest way to find out is to rotate the part and turn a little ring like this. And where the lines intersect is where I drill the holes. I'll turn away the scribings after I've done the job. Over now to the bench and my small Proxon drilling machine. I'm using a very small centre drill to initially centre drill the points where I'm going to drill the holes. This is a better way of doing it than using a centre punch because using a centre punch on a fragile item like this could distort it. In the next part of the job you have to be careful not to drill all the way through the piston. I'm drilling the hole just under half the thickness of the piston itself and far enough in to be away from the piston ring groove. I drilled a hole in one side of the piston, then the other side, then I went back to the first side to make sure that both the holes were the same depth. Once the holes were drilled, I put the piston back in the lathe chuck and just cleaned up the front face. And here you see why I drilled the holes. These are a pair of circlip pliers. Absolutely perfect for removing circlips, setting safety valves and removing pistons. That is, provided that you have the two holes drilled in the piston first. And this allows me to fit and remove the piston from the crosshead. You're about to see a top tip time that is a trifle unorthodox and it could be dangerous if you do it wrong. What I need to do is reduce the diameter of the crank pin Whoever machined this, from the original casting, made a good job of the crankshaft itself, but unfortunately the crank pin was too big. I didn't want to risk breaking it by fitting it in a four-jaw chuck, because to be perfectly honest, it isn't 100% accurate. It's not as wonky as it looks in this clip, because the entire lathe is moving, and attached to the lathe is the camera. This is a bit of a disadvantage. How did I know this was going to work? Well, it's down to something called feel, and a lifetime of doing things like this really does help. A couple of sensible health and safety warnings. I don't recommend doing this. If you do, use a file with a handle, keep your hands clear of the chuck, and be very gentle with it. I think it's about time to fit the mechanism together. Here you see the piston, the crosshead, and the connecting rod with its good jump pin. These parts are very well machined. There's no play in them whatsoever. I thought a bit of oil was a good idea. It's amazing the difference a bit of oil makes. Everything's moving quite freely now. Temporarily, I'm putting them back in the box so I don't lose them. There are quite a few jobs still left to do. One of them being to make the glands for the piston rod and the valve rod. And in with the kit was this small piece of brass hexagon to make two gland nuts from. Next it's time for a bit more casting cleaning. This is a sole plate and it's a bit rusty around the edge so I'm just giving it a bit of a clean on some scotch bright. I bought three of these blue scouring pads at the supermarket and they're okay but they're not as good as the green ones. Maybe they're a different grade, finer perhaps. As I use it, I notice a blue deposit around the area where I'm working. This part finished engine is a credit to the man who part finished it. The cylinder and the spacer with the gland in it fit together onto the sole plate without any studs. This clip, which is partially obscured by my sleeve, is showing the first of two 530 seconds of an inch holes in the lugs of the box bed. These, of course, will be used to secure the engine to a suitable baseboard when it's completed. 
Whenever you're cleaning swarf from around the drilling machine, it's a good idea to stop the drill first. Here I didn't do that, and the drill bit picked up the kitchen towel and spun it around. But the good news is, it removed all the swarf. For the second hole, I made sure that my hand was in a different position so my sleeve wasn't obscuring the image. And just for fun, when I was cleaning away the swarf, I did it with the drill revolving, and once again it grabbed the kitchen towel. But at least it moved all the swarf out of the way. Onto the bench, in fact, and here I'm cleaning it off the bench onto the floor. The vacuum cleaner will do the rest. Here you can see the sole plate sat on top of the box base, showing clearly the two holes that I've just drilled in it. Before proceeding any further, I had a quick look at the picture to see which way round the engine needed to be and which side the flywheel went, etc. Luckily, I'd already figured this out. The last job is going to be making the bearings for the crankshaft. This is quite an important part of the build and I will feature it in its own episode. After the work that I did on the crank pin using a needle file, I'm pleased to say it's the right size. As you can see, on both sides of the crankshaft and the crank pin, the number remains the same on the digital caliper. This is important because the crank pin is rounded where it meets the main casting. So what I need to do is just lightly countersink each side of the big end of the connecting rod just to avoid the risk of any binding. In this clip I fitted the connecting rod together and it's fitted around the crank pin. I oiled it first using standard steam engine lubricating oil and here I'm running it in using my electric drill and it seems to be very free without any play. What more could I want? And if nothing else this proves that my needle file method for making crank pins the right size when they are too big definitely seems to work and it's really accurate there's no play in this at all it's very good maybe it's a beginner's look because i've never really done much of this it's something i've thought about doing but never really tried and it does work but i would like to add this is only suitable for small steam engines and that concludes this episode Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.